So, uh, this is the 6th of January 2017, and there is um, a lot going on at the minute in the world of electric vehicles. There is, um, late in 2016, uh, a Nissan uh, Leaf was released that has got a bigger battery at last because they were struggling at about 100 miles range. And it's amazing how little it's coming down to with electric vehicles now that we see what there is that really matters. Um, and we've got the Nissan Leaf uh, where you've got now 30 kilowatt hour batteries. The thing about 30 kilowatt hour batteries is that's big enough to give it a half decent range. Uh, maybe 146 miles they've calculated. Uh, whether that's in the depths of winter with your heaters on full and stuff, I don't know. Nissan take credit really for being the first pardon me, company to make a credible electric car that pretty much looked normal. It's got a bit of a weird back end on it, but it pretty much looked normal, except um, the battery's been a bit poor on range, and of course, even with the Formula E racing, um, in fact, that's brought it more to light that the range is, is an all-consuming issue because they spend all their time watching their range meters, their battery energy levels and stuff. But uh, Renault have fortunately come along and I thought it was a bit miserly and a bit meagre that Nissan were only upping the kilowatt hours by 25%. You know, 24 kilowatt hours going up to 30 kilowatt hours. So in an average size compact family car, that's obviously pans out to be, you know, the difference between a hundred-ish miles range and well over a hundred miles range. Um, now Renault have gone and brought out a Zoe uh, towards the late end of last year. Uh, so we're in 2017, it's available as of any time now to buy in the UK. And the little Zoe, which is smaller, it's, it's kind of a bit bigger than an up, a Polo, uh, a Volkswagen up, sorry, and probably a about the size of a Volkswagen Polo um, and this has come out with a 40 something kilowatt hour battery so it doesn't take a genius to work out it's a smaller car than the Nissan Leaf it's got a 40 kilowatt hour battery which is 33 and third you know it's it's a third more uh, than the Nissan Leaf so that's basically uh, a big kick in the pants they've really um, Renault have really kicked out of the park and that that enables them to claim that on a good day basically they're claiming you can get 200 and something miles out of one of these cars um, now the thing is the thing that also is interesting is the pricing of course they've gone and made the Renault Zoe priced at uh, I was waiting for something to come under 15 grand an electric vehicle to come under 15 grand and they've gone and priced it under 15 grand it's the basic model or whatever, but you can get an electric car that's got a, a range, I would say, you're pretty safely betting that it's over 150 miles uh, and could be as good as 200 and something miles on a good day. In other words, not when you're using all the heaters or, and not on the motorway, because that's where the electric cars are worst. Um, and that car's under 15 grand, that's pretty good. And that now kicks Nissan up the backside. Um, they're getting the batteries Renault from a company called LG Chemicals or something, LG Chem. And that is the same company I understand as the big phone company and TV screen company. And it's all about the batteries, as everyone knows. So, it, I was talking to someone this about, about this the other day. I was at some get-together and we are talking about it with this, this, this woman who's got uh, quite a bit of technical background um, compared to most. Uh, women, I would say, because she used to help her father put cars together. And she was saying, well, you know, because most women basically don't. Uh, and she was saying, well, it's uh, it's all about the capacity and everything and how much it costs, you know. So so we've finally got to the point where you can get a half decent range and it's under 15 grand. And the Zoe is quite a nice car. I've driven one, uh, the older version. And it was all right. It's got the rear camera view and stuff. It's pretty good. Um, electric cars, of course, come with automatic transmission as standard, without having... You see, if you put a lot of the things that are internal combustion engine cars, ICE, ICE for short, 
petrol and diesel engines. If you put a lot of the stuff that you have on that on an electric car, you'd actually become aware of how much energy they actually waste in having to do all sorts of things to cater for just how they are. Put simpler, the automatic transmission as we had it in the old days is a big fluid filled coupling and you've got transmission discs and there's quite a lot of wasted heat. In fact, it needs to run through a radiator to cool the fluid in the transmission. And uh, You put that in an electric car, that would soak up like 20% of the power. But because you have smooth control of the motor, you don't need transmission as such. You might need some gears, which is technically transmission, but you don't need a, um, a coupling system, a torque converter um, as such, because it's, it's got maximum torque at low speed. And you could do such a thing, but it's hard to see why you would, given the torque characteristics and so on. I mean, you could burn out an electric motor, I suppose, if you worked it too hard. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of people saying that's happening. Um, and as somebody, a lecturer in electrical engineering, pointed out to me, um, if you could get the heat gone from an electric motor, if it's working particularly hard, because even though it's 90 plus percent, percent efficient, if it does get hot because you're working it really hard, as long as you could pull the heat out of it, nothing would go wrong with it. So theoretically, see this is in theory, you could have a tiny little motor and it could get all sorts of power put through it. But the problem is you can't get the heat away. And that's what the issue is. So you have to make the motors actually bigger in order that they can dissipate the heat better. Um, there's a couple of basic things I want to say about internal combustion engines compared to electric vehicles, just to cap on what the important thing is. We get away with using internal combustion engines only because uh, a gallon of fuel for a, of petrol or whatever has a massive amount of energy in it. The engines themselves are, to put it bluntly, bloody awful. They are 15 to 23%, I've heard 23% mentioned as how efficient they are, but that's by the motor manufacturer. My figure, as I understand it, 15, 17% maybe, that's basically how efficient internal combustion engines are. The auto cycle, ice technology, petrol and diesel, it's, it's dreadful. In other words, it's 85% efficient as a heater. Um, so actually, th I've come to the conclusion that um, it might be best just to have a small internal combustion engine just to make the heat to be used in the car as a heater because the inefficiency, if, if you need all the heat from the motor, then that becomes not inefficient anymore because you need that amount of heat. So let's say you're always in the Arctic. It would be fair to say you could probably put a 300cc engine in a vehicle in the Arctic, even though it's an electric vehicle, and you'd be able to use all the heat from it 90% of the time. That would become not inefficient anymore because you actually need, most, you can use most of its output and that's what it's all about. It's converting what you put in to something that you want out. But remember, what the internal combustion engine was meant to do was produce power rotation at a shaft. But in order to get it from the shaft of the motor to the shaft at the wheel, we've had to introduce transmission, gearboxes, clutch. It's only because we're conditioned to this. It's like, like children are conditioned to marzipan having to be in birthday cakes. It's only because we're conditioned to this that we accept it. Once you start to question it, let me, let me put this the other way around, and this is the best way I can explain to you how massively better electric vehicles and the technology is compared to internal combustion. Let's say electric vehicles were the norm. How on earth could you walk into a boardroom and, and say one day to me, hey, I've got a great idea. Um, let's put an internal combustion engine in our vehicles. And everyone says, okay, sell it to us. And you say, yeah, it's only 15% efficient. Most of the output comes out as heat because it's crap as a motor. Uh, power out the shaft is only 15% of the energy you put in. And it's noisy. It has 250 or so moving parts compared to the electric motors, one moving part, which is the shaft inside it. How could you possibly sell that? Now that comparison, by flicking it around, we see that if you had the choice, you wouldn't have an internal combustion engine. 
the maintenance I suddenly realised drops out, out out the bottom the, the maintenance is just you're down to basics like tyres and brakes uh, there was a lorry accident recently where several people lost their lives now you're going to say what has this got to do I'll explain one of the things you have with electric cars is regenerative braking and it's actually like a backup braking system they're normally operated by paddles on the steering wheel you can up the regenerative braking because you don't get something for nothing you can't generate electricity from the overrun point where you are got your foot off the accelerator and the car is forcing the motor to turn around this is the other thing about electric motors they work both ways you put energy in, electrical energy you get power out, it turns the shaft but also if you turn the shaft you get electrical energy out exactly the same electrical energy as you need to use putting your battery you don't do that with an internal combustion engine on the overrun you're just wearing the engine out You've cut the fuel and it's the drag on the engine and while it's doing this it makes heat that makes it awful. So regenerative braking. If that lorry that had gone racing down that hill in Painton and Devon, if that lorry had had regenerative braking, that driver would have been sat there. It was bad maintenance apparently and they've taken people to jail for it. But he would just have flicked the paddle on regenerative braking. It would have been upped, multiplied and that would almost have brought that lorry to a standstill. He certainly wouldn't have been doing 40 miles an hour down this steep hill or whatever. So you begin to see there are other benefits that would accrue. Safety benefits, quite apart from, I mean, nothing safer than having a backup braking system. So back to the maintenance front. Um, there are all sorts of maintenance that you just don't have to do anymore. I've got a car that's sitting on the driveway. It's, it's a big Volvo, it's a lovely car, but um, it's got um, internal heater matrixes that need replaced. It's got the three radiators that need replaced. Three uh, Basically, it's got five radiators in it, that car, and I'm pretty sure all of them leak. So you say to yourself, God, I wouldn't have to do that. It's got an automatic transmission, which is okay. It works okay, but it's over 100,000 miles, so that transmission begins to be an issue. He said, God, you know, if I had an electric car, I'd be driving that car right now. Wouldn't be sat waiting for me to fix it with the spare parts I've got. And so you begin to realise that there's a great fear about employment problems with electric cars coming out. Because people aren't going to have to fix them. Not anywhere like the extent they've got to fix uh, internal combustion engine cars. In other words, most of the maintenance work and most of the service you need on them is to do with oil changes and bits going wrong and there are so many fewer bits to go wrong you're down to wipers and screws are getting filled and tires and brakes and they won't even get used as much because you've got that regenerative braking massively helping with your uh, braking effort on fully charged show on youtube uh, we've got robert llewellyn saying look you just um flick the paddle and it almost comes to standstill well that is so much more braking than, than you normally need to use that you will hardly ever touch the brakes and indeed a normal reasonably careful driving that's how it would be so it's a very different situation um, I'm hoping to get a hold of a, a, a electric vehicle in the near future and um, one of the newer ones and give it a reasonable try out over a few days and that would be good to um, experience one of them than, uh, other than just the Zoe I've been in and I, I think there's, there's no doubt if you've got two cars in family, one of them ought to be electric, unless you both are going miles and miles and miles and just must do it all in one run. Um, it's the old thing. Um, people say, oh, it takes ages to charge up an electric car. Well, if that's time that you're not spent, if you're spending time going and watching it charge, yeah, it takes ages. If you're asleep at the time or you're taking a break in a traveller's rest or something or, or, or if you're just stopped at services for a bit you know what typical run we do as a family Scotland 250 miles almost door to door it's 250 miles might be 240 might be 260 if we go to slightly different 250 miles so that's my um, target now we're almost there it's so almost there um, but it's 250 of the worst kind of miles for an electric car because it's on the motorway however having said that I think they relatively benefit from things like dragging behind a lorry or something. I'm not saying you should do this, but relatively other vehicles probably you can 
take advantage of that more than you can an internal combustion engine car. So, so my, my thing would be I'd really be looking for a 350 mile range um, before I'd safely say I'd manage 250 miles. But that'd be our test. And it, it, I'm happy if I can go 100 and something miles, stop, charge it up while we're in having a... We'd be happy to take an hour, hour and a half break instead of three quarters of an hour break to, to charge the vehicle to do the rest. So I've got a feeling that's about doable now. It's certainly doable when one of those Zoe's, and I'm hoping it's going to be doable when the, the Nissan Leafs that's got 30 kilowatt battery in it, 30 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, and just to be pedantic, the watt in kilowatt hour is the only capital because it's the name of a guy. Watt was his surname. So it's kilowatt hour. It's a measure of energy. Um, that's, that's it really. Electric cars are virtually there. We're now just down to battery capacity and price and with the, the all the upping of battery manufacturing that's going on um, it's going to change very quickly. 2017 will be the year I, I, I can safely predict of electric vehicles going from being quite a few people could think about buying them to actually making a lot of sense for people. There's one big thing I'll say about buy, buying them in practice. Um, because it's such a time of innovation um, the depreciation is quite massive on the, the these vehicles that are coming out in the past couple of years and coming out now. Certainly the past ones, because they've been selling for 25 grand and roughly on a car you, you lose 10% a year. Um, so those people have been losing relatively large amounts of money because you can buy three year old Nissan Leafs for five grand. Uh, they were ostensibly 25 grand when you were buying them three years ago. That's a heck of a depreciation. This thing of contract purchasing, contract hire really, it's just a hire, PCP, personal contract. Apparently nowadays, this is from Radio 4 the other day, 80% of cars in the UK are bought in contract hire. Bought. They leave the four car on a contract hire finance basis, um, as opposed to 45% just five years ago or 10 years ago. So massive change. People are much less prone to outright buying them. And I'm saying with electric cars over the next year or two, uh, that might make quite a bit of sense. But I would say with the Zoe, we've probably reached a point where if you bought that, you probably wouldn't lose too badly. And remember, the internal combustion cars are not standing still. They're gonna go quite badly now because those vehicles are about to drop off a cliff in terms of value. Once you've got an equivalent electric vehicle to an internal combustion engine, to put it bluntly, if tomorrow Renault put the Zoe uh, electrics into a Clio, their Clio sales would take a hit. Internal combustion three-cylinder engines they've got, they'd take a hit.